So question number one. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, now nah, we'll do that one. We'll wait for that. We'll wait for that one. What's that hurts my that hurts my mouth. Ah. Uh. I fell off my sled. That's a snowmobile, that's what we call them. In Canada here are sleds. Super fast story time. It was going about 40, maybe 35 miles. It wasn't even ripping that fast. I think my track hit some ice, went up on its side. I freaked out. I don't even remember how it happened. I was just riding it and then I wasn't riding it. The last memory I had was like, the sled was just a little bit too far in front of me and I remember thinking to myself, I can't hold on. So like I, I bailed, let go, went down, broke the fall with my left arm and I heard like my elbow just boof. And then I twisted and my head smashed the ice and my mouth was open. So ugh, I bit my lip. That's why, that's why it looks stupid. Helmet smashed into the side of my face. That's why this is, it's ugh. hurt my neck. And then I just rolled like a rag doll, like just like throwing an action figure out the window on a highway. Almost knocked myself out. Everything was like dark yellow and blurry. When I looked up, my sled was like a hundred feet in front of me. The story's weird because I really don't know what happened. I was just riding it. Then I wasn't riding it. My friend came over, checked me out, made sure my shoulder wasn't dislocated and my arm. I had no use and no range of emotion for my elbow. So I had to ride back to his house for about half an hour, one handed. That was a brutal, brutal ride back. Uh, he loaded up my, my sled and my truck and took me home and then my parents came to get me and I went to the hospital to make sure that nothing was wrong with me and they checked my eyes and my head said I might have a mild concussion. And they x-rayed my elbow and said I just sprained it so bless up. <laughs> I'm super fortunate and grateful that this, that could have gone wrong so many ways and uh, I'm very fortunate that it's just ended up with like a busted lip and sprained and this, I'm very sore, everything everything hurts. So if I seem a little bit less animated today, it's because of that fall that I took. So we had some plans for uh, for today's video that included a lot more kind of running around, but um, I just wasn't up to it. But I wanted to get you guys something because uh, Two Minute Tuesdays, like I said at the beginning of the year, we're committing to these. I've probably already gone over the two minute time limit just explaining the story. And let's, uh, let's do a Q&A because there's a lot of things people have been asking me lately on Twitter and on Instagram and it's been like, a full year since I've done it. It's about time we answer some questions. So I posted yesterday on Twitter, ask me anything. Doesn't necessarily have to be camera related because usually when I do these, the only questions I get are like, what lens should I buy? What camera should I buy? Full frame or mirrorless? Uh, and there's nothing wrong with those questions, but it's nice when you do get like a, a nice eclectic mix of questions to, to run through. So this is the tweet that I posted. Boop. 754 questions asked. So that's amazing. Told you guys to use PM questions as the hashtag. So I'm just gonna run through some of the ones that I liked while I was uh, sitting on the couch eating soup and you know feeling sorry for myself. These are some of the questions that I thought uh, would be fun to answer. Let's start with question number one. Mads Hensel asks, when you sit at the end of the day and look back, what makes your day a good day besides the obvious answer, coffee emoji? And yes, obviously coffee makes the day better all the time. So I keep a little field notes book with me and like a little space pen. Boop. And uh, I love to write down notes and to-do lists. So a good day for me is like legitimately, this sounds kind of dorky, but like when I go back in my field notes at the end of the day and I've crossed off everything on my to-do list and I feel productive. Like I went out, even the things I didn't want to do, I just got through them when I'm productive and I'm tired at the end of the day. And I don't think there's been a moment in that day where I felt bored or sat around kind of thinking about what I should do. It's just been nonstop productivity. And that spans across just chores and house stuff and business and YouTube and friends and it's just like it's a stacked day when I look back and I see that that's when I'm like I'm really happy with those days and I think to myself I even say it out loud sometimes I'm like what a great day got so much done and that field notes list as visual proof that I did all of those things and it just feels so good crossing things off my list so yeah that's when I know it was a good day long story short getting things done is a good day <laughs> Roland Matikos Metikos again as always I'm sorry for ruining all of your names. What do you love besides photography and YouTube? There's a whole ton of things I love besides photography and YouTube. I've got a lot of little weird hobbies. I used to be a magician, so I still play the deck of cards every single day. So I used to do that, I uh, collect a lot of weird little things. I'm really big into pocket knives, EDC. 
friend of mine's a knife maker, made this for me. What's up, Lucas? Love power sports, obviously riding my snowmobile, riding my jet ski, played the drums my whole life, played the guitar for a good portion of my life. My dad builds acoustic guitars, which is pretty cool. Used to own a leather business, so I'm like obsessed with leather goods. Just tasty leather. That's nice shell cordovan right there. That's just Asian real nice. Look at that. Look at that wear. Ooh. And then obviously coffee is a massive hobby as well. Roland also asks, when did you know when you can make money from photography? I've been doing it for almost five years now and I think I'm pretty good and I wanna start making money from it. So just wondering when you knew. I just never wanted to work for anyone else. And I knew that photography was a job and that was something that was, you know, capable of making me an income. So I just fired up a quick website, started making business cards handing them out, going around, seeing who needed photos for what different jobs. And I was gonna get my teeth cleaned at the dentist. I'd say like, hey, do you guys need photos? I'm a photographer. I'd leave my card everywhere, ask everyone all the time. And that just kind of manifested into doing weird photo gigs for dentist offices and jewelry boutiques and random people's businesses, which then I remember one day I was like inside some guy's office taking pictures of like horrible looking carpet because his job was to clean and replace carpets. So like I was taking my Rebel XT and all my lenses and all my cool camera gear that I was like destined to be a photographer with. And I was taking pictures of just like garbage carpet samples so that he could show, you know, his clients, this needs to be replaced and clean. And like, that's what I was using my photography skills for. So you got to start somewhere. And that's, that's where I started. I knew I could make money with it within like two months of having the equipment. Cause people start asking you when they see your camera, do you do photos? George and Honey asks, if you could pick up and move your family anywhere in Canada, where would it be? Uh, probably Vancouver. Alexa says, how many coffee mugs do you have? I have a lot of coffee mugs. Probably my wife would kill me if she knew I was doing this because it's a mess and I don't maintain it and it's supposed to be my responsibility, but that's that's a lot of mugs and coffee stuff. I, I take up a lot of room. Ralph Bucci asks, B-U-C-C-I. Bucci? Butchy? Butchy? Names are hard, man. Two questions, he says, one, do you ever collab with smaller creators? And two, are you going to VidCon in California this year? If so, I'd love to shake your hand. To answer your first question, yes, I collab with smaller creators. One of my good friends is Cody Warner, who is no small creator. And I put that in quotes because his whole movement is called no small creator. His whole philosophy is that the words small and creation are an oxymoron. Creation's so massive, there's no way it could be small. So there is no person that's creating that is small. And I love that. I love that philosophy. I think it's super cool and he's built this whole brand and business off of that no small creator. So yes, I love it. It's so much fun. It's refreshing and it's always exciting and I'm always open for the opportunity to do that. Number two, am I going to VidCon in California this year? Uh, I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to shake your hand too, but unfortunately, no, I won't be going to VidCon this year. Arthur says, what is the one thing you are most proud of? My kids. My little boy, and my little girl are the two things that I'm most proud of in this world. Hands down, bar none. That is it. Tracy Schweitzer says, Schwitzer, Schwe Schweitzer. I'm gonna go with my gut and say that it, Schweitzer was the, right, was the right way. Tracy Schweitzer says, how come we don't see more of the wife and kids pics? I don't really, I don't put my wife and my kids on the internet almost ever. My wife pops into the vlogs here and there for no particular reason. She's just doing her own thing. And my content primarily doesn't focus around family. It's not family based content. So I've never felt the need to put them in my photography and video based content just because it's completely separate. And my kids are so small, they just don't need to be on the internet. So that's why. Reed Shepard says, how do you feel about Sony's? <gasps> <gasps> the big question. How does Peter McKinnon feel about Sony? Uh, they're great. They make amazing cameras. They make really, really, really good mirrorless cameras and I've got no ill will towards them, their brand or the cameras that they make. I just don't use them. I've got a different workflow of different equipment and I'm happy with what I'm using right now, but that doesn't mean they don't make awesome products. So yeah, Sony's cool. I'm not a big fan of the orange color scheme because I used to work at Home Depot for like 27 hours and that really ruined the color orange for me. So I've got a little bit of like a weird thing with it, but that doesn't, yeah, moving on. Brian WT says, explain your red camera. Is it time? Maybe it's time. Is it time? It's time. It says it's time. Ugh. This is my red camera. This is the Monstro 8K. Before we go any further, I fully blame Marquez Brownlee for the uh, the addition of this camera to my lineup. I went and visited him last year. You'll see some of the footage here. He showed me this camera. We had some fun playing with it. Ever since then, we've been texting and he's been 
secretly manipulating me into buying one of these cameras and it finally happened. I caved. This kind of manifested after we launched the bucket shot. I've got a lot of plans to expand that this year and do multiple episodes of the bucket shot and I want to make it even better. I'm super proud of the bucket shot as it is right now, but I would love that to be the worst it ever is. That's kind of like the bar that I'm setting. So how do I get there? I want to up the production quality. I want to up the ante with everything that I'm doing with all the little short films that I plan to make this year. One of the ways I'm going to do that is by shooting some of this stuff on red. Another reason I really wanted to get into this ecosystem and explore this is I don't know much about it. And I love that I don't know much about it because learning so many new things about cinema cameras, it's like I just started photography again. So being able to ask other people questions and watch other videos and learn stuff that is just so over my head, that has been so much fun again. Now, I'm not saying go spend the money so that you can learn things again. There's plenty of other ways to learn things without spending a dime. As far as cinematography goes and my other reasons for getting this, that's just one of the things that excites me a lot is the learning curve. It looks amazing. It's ridiculous. It does 8K 60 full frame raw video. So I can color grade the raw footage of this like I color grade my photos in Lightroom, almost exactly the same. So the capabilities and possibilities how I can make this footage look blows my mind. I've got a couple of documentary films that are being finalized in the next few months that I need to shoot this year. So again, another reason I wanted to use this and a few of the other DPs that I'm going to be working with also shoot on the same camera. So keeping that ecosystem tight so that all cameras are red. It's just, it's exciting. There's a lot happening with this. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would be interested in seeing like a full breakdown of this camera, what it is and why it costs what it does. And just essentially, because there's a lot, there's a lot to know about these things. Let me know. I wasn't sure if you guys would be interested in something like that just because it is like a, a pretty advanced piece of equipment. And I know I have a very broad audience right from super beginners right up to people that probably have been using these for a long time. So it's just something that I'm not sure on. If you're interested in something like that, let me know. And I'd be more than happy to kind of break this down and, and talk a little bit more in depth about my plans for this camera, what it does and show you some samples and, and why they are so expensive. But this is, is very exciting. I have dreamed of owning a camera like this for my entire career career as a filmmaker. It's very, very exciting. And uh, yeah, I got big plans for it. So it's actually when we were shooting in Dubai and Andreas had like a 10 year old version of the red with the Mysterium sensor and the dynamic range and the shots that he was getting at like 96 frames per second, just like it looked so good. And I remember showing my wife the footage and one of the first things she said is, why does this look like a movie? And I was like, oh, your eyeballs know the difference. You don't know anything about dynamic range or stops or camera specific tech specs, but your eyeballs can actually differentiate between all those stops of dynamic range in a camera that doesn't have those. That was just one of the things that put me over the edge and I was like, it's time, it's time. Ooh, baby, that is a tasty, tasty piece of cinema glass. Dylan Hamilton says, what was the gear you had for your first paid gig? That would be the Canon Rebel 350D, the Rebel XT and the 18-55 kit lens. I was paid to take pictures of rings and jewelry at a jewelry shop, and I think I got paid 200 bucks to do that. That was actually my second job. My first job was to take portraits of my friend Bobby that I also made a video on last year called I Was a Horrible Photographer. If you wanna see some of those pictures, they're in that video. That was my first official paid gig. It was 500 bucks, and then my second paid gig was, was $200. So I remember making $700 from those two jobs and that nearly paid for half of the camera or close to half of the camera. And that's really when I was like, wow, I could keep doing this and I could keep making money and I could buy more cameras and more lenses. So like the first two years of making money with photography just went right back into spending more money on photography. I'm sure some of you out there know that feeling. The E-Tech says, how's your Spanish? Desafortunadamente, uh, it's not good. Desafortunadamente, how do you say unfortunately? Desafor I have to ask my wife, hang on. Desafortunadamente, mi español no es muy bueno. Desa, it's, desafort it's not very good. You would think being married to a Hispanic woman for nearly 10 years, it would be better. It's terrible. I read Spanish kids book with my kid because I'm trying to learn too. <laughs> so it's, it's not very good. Sean Holiday says, who do you call the most? You know that it's you. I call you every single day, like four times. Dan Daniel 
much. Daniel says, one, external recorders like the Atomus Ninja, what type of cameras benefit most and is it really worth spending the money on those? And two, Toronto, what is it like to live there? Is it fast paced lifestyle? Uh, Toronto's pretty awesome, we'll start with that one. It's, uh, yeah, I would guess it's fast paced, probably not as fast paced as somewhere like Manhattan, you know, living in New York City, but Toronto is kind of like the New York City of Canada. So depending where you come from, if you're moving to the city and you are from like the prairies or you're from the East Coast, or maybe you even you're from Van City, yeah, it's gonna be a lot more fast paced than you're used to. As far as external recorders like the Atomus Ninja, if your camera supports off camera recording and the Ninja will give you a higher bit rate, yeah, 100% they're worth investing in because one, you get a monitor and you need that anyway if you don't have a swivel screen. And then two, you're getting a higher output bit rate of your camera. Your footage is just gonna look better because it's a higher quality. So absolutely hands down recommended. I think Maddie actually just did a video on how to supercharge your camera with something like an external recorder. I'd recommend checking that out. VPTV Production says, are you self-taught in your videography and photography or have you gone to school for training in the past? I'm completely self-taught. I have not gone to school for any of this. I did go to school for graphic and web design, but I dropped out with one credit remaining to graduate with a diploma. And I kind of think it's cooler to be one credit away than to actually own the diploma. So I will remain in that state for the rest of time. Brian v Brian v v Vlasic. Brian Vlasic, a serious question he says I have. Do you ever worry about running out of video ideas or worry that one day people will just not show up to watch? Absolutely, every single day. And not only do I worry about running out of video ideas, oftentimes I do run out of video ideas. And yeah, there's always that fear of like one day it's just this job is just gonna cease to exist and I'm gonna be like, well, what should I do now? And I think that's just the mentality of YouTube and content creation is like, you kind of just don't know when that train ride's gonna end, um, which sometimes makes you just constantly keep up and trying to create content regardless, which can be bad at the same time as good. Fortunately enough for myself is I don't go very long without ideas. I got a lot of people around me that give me great ideas and inspire me with ideas. And maybe I wake up in the morning with nothing, but on the drive to work, I'll see something that sparks an idea or I'll have been watching TV the night before or seen a Netflix show or whatever, or someone says something in conversation and that sparks up like, that would be really interesting to talk about. And sometimes we just like to goof around and make videos just for the sake of making videos. And they're not always the most popular ones, but I just like creating stuff. So it's kind of an ebb and flow. Sometimes it's really, really great. And sometimes it's, it's very difficult. Race, rice. Mohammed says, can you do a video showing us in detail how you make your coffee? I've been wanting to make a video like that the entire time I've owned this channel own this channel. The entire time I've been making videos on this channel, I have wanted to make a video on like how to make Chemex coffee or just do like a tutorial on coffee making. You know, this guy's like, do it. And this guy's like, do people come to your channel to watch photo tutorials and video tutorials and maybe some vlogs? Nobody wants a lesson on how to make coffee. Then this guy's like, 100% make a dope video with coffee. People would love that. So again, I wanna know what you guys think down below in the comments. Should I make a tutorial on how to make coffee? Just straight up. like. This is what I do in the morning and how I make coffee. Here we go. If you're interested in that, 1000%, I will make it. Pilot underscore Maverick says, favorite car? I don't like cars, I like trucks. Favorite truck? Ford F-150. Ryan McCarville says, would you ever appear on First We Feast's Hot Ones if asked? If so, have you ever watched Casey's episode? Absolutely, I've seen Casey's episode and absolutely I would go on Hot Ones if I was asked. And I personally feel like I could crush that without effort. I'm putting that out there right now. Yeah, I don't even think it would be difficult whatsoever. Let's go. If anybody from First We Feast watches this, I am down. And uh, yeah, I don't think I would struggle nearly, nearly even a quarter of what Casey struggled. Just saying. MKE Drone says, when was the last time you had a haircut? People are always interested in my haircut. Cut your hair, man, you should. I never understand that. I'm like, here's a tutorial on how to make great photos in Photoshop. And they're like, hey, cut your hair. I'm like. Okay. I haven't had a haircut since like 2016. My hair's like down to here. So yeah, it's been, it's been several years because I was trying to grow it out again. I used to have long hair. I cut it, donated it, immediately regretted cutting it, and then was on the road to recovery, growing it back. That's finally addressed. So if anyone says cut your hair, you're blocked, deleted immediately, forever. On every single social platform, I will find you and block you and delete you. 
And that is it for the questions. Thank you so much to everybody that wrote me on Twitter. There are so many more that I didn't get to, hundreds more. If you guys actually like this Q&A, let me know in the comments below again, like the third time. I read them, so I love your feedback because it helps me make better videos. So if you do enjoy watching Q&As and, and listening to me answer questions and, th and this kind of thing, if you do like that, I would love to know it because I'm happy to make more of these. They're fun and easy. It's helpful to me. So let me know below. Other than that, I'm gonna go take another Advil, get back into bed because I'm flying to San Francisco tomorrow morning and I need to rest up before I got to go through all that security and take my coat off and my hoodie off a thousand times because it's uh, everything everything hurts. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Vote for me. We are nearing the very end of uh, being able to vote for the Shorty Award for Breakout YouTuber of the Year. I appreciate everyone that's done it so far. And that is all I have for you today. I will see you guys on Thursday. Peace. Look at these socks. My friend Omar gave these to me. That's latte art. You see on the sides here, there's a Chemex and it says, where does it say it? Does it say it on the coffee wizard? <laughs> coffee wizard. I love coffee and I'm, and I'm a wizard because of magic and they all went off camera. That was like mostly off frame. Nine of hearts. Boop. Wait, how do I do that? Look. Can you see that? The two of diamonds? Oh, boop! Oh, damn it. Hang on. Oh, that looks amazing, doesn't it? Yes. You can take something like the four of spades, it goes into your hand, it vanishes, you can show both sides, and it pops out here. I used to practice stuff like that in my bedroom. Literally just sitting there for hours. <sighs> Missed it, hang on. <sighs> Second try! Uh, yeah, I got nothing else. Peace! Boop, 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 boop. My face hurts.